Hey everybody, Watches Review here with a look at Power Charge Rhino from the 3 and 3 quarter inch Spider-Man. The, um, Spider-Man, um... You know what, let's just call it the Fiercest Foes line because this tagline appears in the front and is also prominently displayed on the back. However, the colors and the packaging itself does remind me quite a bit of the Hasbro of Spider-Man classics, especially the bottom portion here. Although we have this pretty cool looking cutout of Spidey on the top. For people not familiar with this line, it means you probably haven't seen any of the other reviews out there yet, which generally are pretty down on it because the paint and, you know, production work does look a bit lax, especially in terms of articulation. Hell, I wasn't even going to bother buying any of these, but then I saw that they were coming out with a Rhino this wave, and you know, absolutely had to get it just because it looked pretty decent. Also, if you don't like the fact that he seems to resemble the Ultimate Rhino a little bit, the armor is snap-on, or in this case, snap-off, so you can get a more regular-looking character. And also, I feel compelled to point out the fact that although it mentions help Spidey battle his fiercest foes, each wave seems to come out with like four or five different Spider-Man figures, and then maybe one villain at the most, so I don't know what's up with that. And here we have Rhino out of box, minus the silly armor. For people not familiar with the character of Rhino, what's the matter you? Uh, he's a Spider-Man villain. He's a poor Russian peasant or whatever who ended up getting a upgrade via some chemical treatments and then some sort of a costume that was bonded onto his skin. His real name I can't even pronounce, but... Um, so other aliases included O'Hearn, which I believe they used for the Spectacular Spider-Man cartoon. So, um, in terms of figure-wise, this is probably the nicest that you'll see for the entire Spider-Man Fierce's Foes line. I've seen quite a few of them in stores, and all the Spider-Man figures look kind of iffy, and then the villains don't look all that great. The absolute worst was the Hobgoblin. I don't even know why they bothered with that. But like many of the other figures, he in fact does not have the knee articulation, which is a source of irritation because it looked like he did in pack just because they had the armored piece on and then... But you know, whatever. I mean, just, um... It... it annoys me but doesn't impede him too much it just means that you can only propose him a set number of ways and then I mean the big thing is he does have a pretty wide array of motion on the upper body and you can get him into some pretty cool poses and because the head can move straight up you can actually get a good charge going on here boom 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 Assuming you can actually find something to support his weight. We have a peg hole here, but I can't think of any stand that would actually Hold this figure because he's a rather hefty one By the way, I'll probably be doing a second review for this guy because I filmed a whole longer intro But then didn't like it and then you know I'll give people the chance to see what kind of style of reviewing they prefer and I'll probably just go forward with that from there. But yeah, I have him attached to the War Machine stand here from the Iron Man 2 line. Although it does hold his weight, the stand can't hold it. Correction, does not hold his weight. <laughs> he actually has that same problem with some of the poses I was putting him in earlier where I was doing a um, kind of a smashing position. Like Rhino Smash, raw. And then one day he just flipping fell right off the shelf. Went, Ow. and that's why I don't pose him like that on the corner of my desk anymore. Although I have posed him quite a bit in the past. It's been over a week I've had him now. Yeah, and then I've just been really bad about getting this review online. Just get him back and pose him. Now we have a whole wide rate of joints here, but the problem is um, right out of box these joints are like incredibly stiff and the bicep can be fully twisted around, so uh, another possible source of errors, but as well as just trying to move the joint for the first time, the whole forearm snapped off. I guess this um, 
goes pretty far up and then attaches into the shoulder itself so the bicep is just a tiny piece and that's why you're able to rotate the bicep full 360 so his elbow can be kind of where on the front of the forearm in some freakish way. There are only two real colors to this character besides the face and that's just the default plastic although it looks like there might be a little bit of shadowing places and then this one lighter blue texture that's used for the torso here in um, little bits and then also on the horn which is a little bit scraped off. I mean if I hadn't been like so excited about this figure I probably would have just bought him then left him in pack and then waited to see if I could find another one then returned him for the but after I'd bought the better one, but I mean, Rhino is a awesome character, and or at least this figure is awesome. Also, a very big figure. He's basically the same size as the Marvel Universe Hulk. This is the Secret Wars version, but they all basically use the same sculpt. And I'm talking both in terms of height and general width, although the chest goes out a little bit further here. The up to the shoulders it's basically the same then you know the whole effect is pretty close so you can just pull out your Marvel Universe Hulk put next to your Spider-Man then you have a rough idea of how it scales up because I do not have a Spider-Man handy Rhino comes equipped with a fistful of armor which interestingly enough doesn't actually have peg holes on the character although you clearly see these little pegs on this they do, however, just sort of fit into the grooves on his... I guess that's kind of like a peg hole, but it's just something that looks really natural. Because it's an indentation, but it's not just a standard circular indentation. But I'm um, rambling here. Unless I'm supposed to pop in, you know that it actually does fit in place, so maybe these can be used on either shoulder and are identical. Just quickly toss this on. Just to give you an idea. Oh wait, wait, that was for the arm. Actually, let me just stop the camera. At any rate, like I was saying, these things just seem to snap into place, although they don't necessarily have like visible peg holes for it. I think this is how the gauntlets go on. And this is why I thought that, you know, the knee worked, just because you can't really see the side of the knee in package because it's partially covered and then you can definitely see like an indentation like where it would move but unfortunately it does not that one doesn't seem to fit in as well as the other one the other one's a lot more stable but again I really do not like this armor so thankfully we can just take it off now I believe a lot of the spider-man armors are interchangeable within the spider-man figures but there's no way that you're going to be able to fit any of this crap onto a Spider-Man figure, so... You can write that off right here and now. In terms of articulation, which I began discussing and then deviated from, there's not a ton of articulation in these figures. We do not have any rotation at the wrist, it's just a solid sculpt. The elbow, however, rotates in addition to going in and out. It's impeded by the elbow mark on the back. Bicep can rotate a full 360, but obviously it's going to look really weird. Shoulder has a normal range of motion, except for, you know, it's kind of like that one ballish joint leg, so you have to physically move the line to get it to go in the direction you want, but I mean, it's not a huge hassle. Head can rotate around, but cannot go out to side to side. It has a kind of generous joint here, which allows it to move straight up. Kind of like on the, um, I think it was the Spectacular Spider-Man toy line. I meant to pick up that rhino, but, nah. The legs have the same kind of joint as you see up there. Now one of the things that really irks me about this figure is the fact that when you have him pose like no matter how you end up posing him like one ball joint will always be exposed and the other one won't so it looks kind of funky 
Plus, I mean, you can only basically really pose him like this to get the full effect of the weight in. But then, you know, the arms you can do basically anything with. No foot or knee articulation. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but I just wish it had those additional points. It, makes, it does limit a lot of what you can do with a figure, but I think they did this kind of as a cost-saving measure in addition to, in this case, it might also just be practicality, considering that he is a heavier character and the joints might wear faster. Well, what else can I say? He's a pretty nice figure with a ton of detailing. And you know, he's probably the figure most worth owning from this line. So, until next time.